So how are you feeling at the moment with everything that you've been through over the last few weeks? Me personally, it's been very difficult, very mentally and physically draining. Also working at the same time, getting time off work, it's been, been challenging. And what has been the most difficult part of this trial for you? Previously, we didn't know our other child was involved with the attempted murder. We knew about Baby M, what happened on the 9th of April 2016. And until then we were very, very happy. And we were celebrating the second day of our children. Our, our family came from London and then they said, wow, congratulations, you've become the mother of two children. I was very happy. We were over the moon. Then suddenly at four o'clock, the nurse came and said, you need to come downstairs. I was very sore. And I thought, that morning I was giggling with my kids and they were very, very happy in their cots. Then suddenly this happened. We'd come down with my parents to see the boys. Everything was going well. We held the boys. We went back upstairs because my wife was in the ward upstairs. And then within 10, 15 minutes, a nurse is coming, charging upstairs, saying, you need to come back down. And I was there first because my wife was still in bed. I was the first one into the unit at that time. And the image that I saw was just horrendous. That image, I'll never forget because it's on the brain. He was just crying, crying. And I said, oh, my God, what happened? And the doctor was giving compressions to baby M. One of the nurses, Mary Griffith, said to me, I've not done anything. I've not done anything. And, and Lucy was behind her. And I was just praying to God, saying, what has happened to my child? I, I've not done anything wrong in my life to anybody, so why do I have to suffer? And then after 30 minutes, he recovered. So just take me back to that image. What did you see when you went down and you saw your son? When I went down, I saw doctors around the trolley and they're just pumping his heart like like a rag doll, really. He was just like a doll and they were just going like that, like that, to the chest. How did you feel at that point? I was just, I was just full of the tears. I didn't know what to think. We're first time parents, we didn't know what was going on. And you're saying at that point, another nurse, Mary Griffiths, was telling you she had not done anything wrong, but you said that you saw Lucy Letby. What did you see of Lucy Letby at that point? She was just standing like that. How was she standing? Very calm and cool. She was standing calm and, and cool. And what I can remember was Mary Griffith's face. She was saying, I've not done anything. I've not done anything. But at that time, I didn't know her name. But when I saw her in court, I knew her name. And I told the police, she's the nurse who said to me, I've not done anything. I've not done anything. And Lucy was standing behind Mary Griffiths. And Mary Griffiths was very worried and panicked. Did you suspect Lucy Letby at any point in that time? No, not at that time. We didn't know anything even afterwards until the police came knocking. She was very cool, calm, calculated, and a criminal-minded lady, but we didn't notice anything at the time. So after your first boy, your oldest boy, collapsed, what happened when nurses and doctors came in to help him and you suddenly realised, OK, he's become more stable, what happened? You saw him looking like a rag doll. You saw doctors working on him? Yes, they were prescribing medication and they were ready to give up. Dr Jayaram was ready to give up after 30 minutes and then all of a sudden, Baby M just came back to life out of nowhere. And by the grace of God, he's OK today. The doctors told us that kind of thing happens in premature babies because they're premature and at that time we believed what the doctors were telling us because we didn't know any different. So explain to me about what happened when you heard about that. Well, when we heard about Baby L's issue, we were shocked because the hospital had not told us. Yes, exactly. When the police came to our house and told us, your second child is involved with Lucy, we were shocked and we said we didn't know about Baby L. Why had they not told us about Baby L? We did know about Baby M, but they hadn't told us about Baby L. And what we had heard in court up until nine o'clock, Mary Griffith and Lucy were there at night time with Baby L. And as soon as Mary Griffith left at half past nine and she got the chance to attack Baby L and administer insulin to Baby L, very high level of insulin, poisonous insulin. How did you feel when you heard, I imagine in court for the first time, Lucy Letby denying that she has poisoned your baby? It's all very difficult. How did you feel that she said he had been poisoned with insulin, but it just wasn't her? It was either her or somebody else. There was only two people there, and she's the only one who's been 
is in the dock for it. And I'm sure the police have investigated the other nurse who was on the shift. So it's only, it's one or the other, and I don't think it's the wrong nurse. How does it feel to hear her deny that? On her second interview with the police on 12th of June 2019, she accepted that someone has given insulin to baby L, and it's a very high volume of insulin, so she must be aware. Only she and Mary Griffith were in the room. So just talk to me a little bit about Lucy Letby. How do you feel that she wasn't even rostered to work on the 9th of April, but she worked because of staffing issues on the unit? She always liked extra time. She asked us to change a nappy and we'd said to her, oh, we're very scared about changing nappies because we were first-time parents, so can you show us how to change a nappy because my kids are very small and tiny? And At the time, her body language and her behaviour totally changed. I asked her, Lucy, do you work all day and night time? And she said, yes, I'm working extra time. So you spoke to her quite a lot then? Whenever I met my boys and she took a blood sample and put the injection on the TPN bag. And at that time, I thought she was doing very well for my kids. But at the time, I I didn't have any idea. I told my husband that she took the blood from baby L's foot many times. So when was this? When were you having that conversation with her? After the incident happened... I think she was unsuccessful with killing my kids. That's why she was very annoyed with us. She thought that I couldn't kill your baby. So you're saying that she seemed more aggressive after they had recovered. And do you think that's because she was frustrated? Yes. She wasn't successful in murdering. And then in June, my kids were discharged. She asked another doctor, do I have to be worried about what Dr Gibbs has said? That means she was now suspecting about herself that she did all the things. When you have heard Lucy Letby talk in court time and time again, denying she harmed any babies. I feel very sick of her. Oh, my God. I I go home with a headache. I have to take paracetamol every day when I go home just because I have to listen to her lie and lie and lie. And I say now, enough. Don't tell lies, please. When you've sat there in the dock and taken the oath, I think just please say everything that's right and, and true. So why are you telling lies? You were lying to yourself and to your religion also. Why? What has Lucy Letby taken from your family? Everything. She took everything. Our joy, happiness. I'm not the same person I was before. And in the run-up to the, to the case, I'd suffered a seizure. Before October, I suffered a seizure. It's just constant. I'm a changed person. In what way? The seizures are triggered by anxiety? Yeah, anxiety, stress. And obviously the doctors did all the tests and everything, but they didn't find anything. What has life been like for the last seven years for your family? It's been hell, to be honest. Very, very horrendous. When we're talking about how families have been affected, how your family has been affected, and what life has been like, what has life been like day to day? Has she caused any long, life-changing injuries to your sons? As far as we know, Baby M did have a scan and the doctors did say that one part of his brain is damaged permanently. So he might may deviate from his peers and stuff. At the moment, if you look at him, you wouldn't think any differently, just like a normal child. So it's something we'll just have to keep monitoring over the years as the years progress. Is that something you're worrying about every day? Yeah. Yes. Baby L also, whenever he sleeps at night time, his head is totally wet. So he experiences challenges every day? Every day. In what way? He sweats every night. He says, Mummy, it, it's so sweaty, my head, whenever I sleep at night time. And I said, come on and sit near the fan. So he sits near the fan to dry his hair every day. And have you been to doctors now that you know what's happened to him? Yes, I took him to the GP and then the GP is saying, it's normal, just keep an eye on them. If you were to describe Lucy Letby, what does she mean to you? To me, nothing. She means nothing. Just an evil person. There's no way she should have been able to get away with it for so long. And she already proved with her note. She wrote, I am evil and did it with a purpose. We see through her note. The green note, the yellow note. So she proved her note already. We saw it. She said, I'm evil. I love my boys. Even when they fight, even when they're arguing or fighting. They are my life. They are my support. When we heard what... 
we broke down when we heard that Lucy, that she harmed our kids. We broke down. Previously, we were very happy. We tried to say to them that Lucy has tried to harm you, but they don't understand. They make a joke. Mummy, we will kick her, we'll bite her, we'll pull her hair. Mummy, they, they don't understand yet. But you have told them? Yeah. They just make a joke of her. Why is this important for you that they know? We want them to know, but we don't want them to find out from anybody else in the future if we're not around. If they find out and then they say mum and dad never told us. Obviously, we'll speak to them again when they're a bit older, when they can understand. But it's important that they know this happened to them and they don't hear it from a third party or something. And we know how this has impacted you both. But for you as a mother and as a parent, what's life been like for you for the last seven years? Uh, it's terrible for me to handle my kids, my job. I have to look after my family, I have to look after my kids and I have to do homework and everything is it's very distracting to me as well and having to go to court and then I have to look after my kids, drop off my kids, pick up my kids. It's, it's very disrupting to my life. I'm worried about my husband. He's already had one seizure and Every day I'm thinking about Lucy Let Be, Lucy Let Be, everywhere we go to court and she comes onto the witness box and, and, and tells lies. It was very, very hard. <laughs>